The Owl Moon Lab is probably one of the most famous paranormal hotspots on record. And that was a big part of the movie, the Bigfoot Internet Connection Revealed. There was a shed there, a metal shed, which was the focal point of all these activities that were going on, Bigfoot, um, ghosty stuff, everything was happening there. The largest phenomena was that inside that, that shed, there was this incredible racket of banging and carrying on. When we were there investigating, we decided one of the things we would do is that when it seemed to be that the shed was getting active, we would all go inside one after another with our cameras and see if we, any of us could make contact in there. When Alan went in, he got, he got a result. The shed got active. Uh, he felt a presence. He felt a change in temperature to colder, which is sometimes associated with something coming through a portal. So that put in my mind that Alan was in some way special. Gotcha. I am not. I heard that. Nope, but I heard it. I heard that. Ask it a question, Alan. Are you here? Can you make more noise so I know you're here? I heard that little cracking. Is this your home? Is this your home? Good question. Crack sound. Loud crack sound. I don't even know what that sound was. It sounded like something trying to get in. and I'm a paranormal investigator and documentary filmmaker. Thirteen years ago, I became interested in the Bigfoot phenomenon and immersed myself in the topic. Since then, I've had many unexplained experiences in the woods and heard countless stories from eyewitnesses. In 2019, while filming for the documentary The Bigfoot Alien Connection Revealed, I started to become aware that my experiences were happening more frequently and with greater intensity. I began to feel a connection to these beings and even felt as if they were guiding me on my quest for answers. Follow me on my journey as I make contact with the spiritual Bigfoot. Nature. It's the heart and soul of the world we live in. It's a living, breathing entity. It can provide for us. It can take from us. Like the Native Americans who walked these lands long before us, 
we too have a connection to this world. But most of us have forgotten. Native spirituality is, uh, in our Lakota way of life, we, we have, um, we're closely connected with everything around us. And so with that connection is our spirituality. So, and all of it is just basically a, a special form of prayer um, for certain events. That belief is where my Bigfoot journey will take me. But first, I had to experience it. When I met Alan, which was back about five, six years ago at one of his Bigfoot Adventure Weekends, he was definitely in the camp of somebody who believed that Bigfoot was some form of primate, elusive, hiding from people, maybe messing with them, but you know, highly intrigued with the possibility of maybe getting a good footprint or you know the usual stuff that re that I had encountered with Bigfoot researchers, uh, looking for telltale signs of them and hoping one day you know to have a visual and maybe capture on cell phone or camera or something like that. So I knew Alan was interested in the paranormal. He had been doing paranormal investigations. So I thought he might be ripe for expanding his horizons into the paranormal into something that might be put Bigfoot into that category of being something paranormal. It seemed impossible to me that the idea that there's a, a primate running around, elusive, hidden, can't be photographed, leaves the physical signs are quite small, mostly tracks. I'd like to do a documentary feature on that possibility that Bigfoot is, is alien in nature. So I said, let's make a movie and see if we can find a connection between alien and, and Bigfoot, and he agreed. Because of the paranormal side of things, I think it wasn't freaky for him to go out there and talk to people about it and try and investigate it. After the filming completed for the Bigfoot Alien Connection revealed, I began to sort of think about and experiment with these ideas that Bigfoot might be something more than just an ape running around or a, an ancestor to the human race or something like that. Um, and it really took a turn when we were at our, our Bigfoot Adventure weekends. It's a yearly camp out that me and my friends put on where we take people out for the weekend and we investigate and show them the ropes and take them out looking for Bigfoot. Um, we did a Thursday night special lapse with a smaller group, maybe 12, 15 of us, and went to a really remote location. It was really high up and hard to get to. It was a couple hours away from where the normal uh, event takes place. Um, so we were out there that night, and me and one of the other attendees, we sort of were towards the back. I, mean, I was bringing up the rear of the group, and um, I don't know. I, I, it's, I've been doing this for 13 years, and I start to get these little... Just a little feeling, you know, a little tingle, something, you know, something feels a little spooky. It feels, it feels a little different, you know. I don't know what it is. There's just an energy or intuition that something's happening. Um, so, I, so I sort of hung back a little bit from the group. Um, and then I heard sort of a noise. It was like a thud, a, th a footstep, very close, not far. Just in, just in the wood line, you know, it's typical. It's right out of view. You can't see it. Uh, the person I was with, um, they have a strong intuition on these things. Um, so we validated with each other that something was happening, something was here. The rest of the group had moved ahead. We could see them, but they weren't part of this. They had moved on. They were oblivious to what was happening. Um, so I sensed it, and the person I was with told me that um, they were able to sort of close their eyes and visualize it and they could see it, sort of like in their mind. It was long hair, it was big and tall, it was sort of a reddish tint, it was a Bigfoot. And uh, it was there to see us. It knew why we were there, and it came to sort of just say hello in, in, in its own way. And it, it I don't know, as, as they were telling me this, I, could, I couldn't really visualize it myself, but it fit with what I was feeling. And I knew, I mean, I knew that this was accurate. And it just sort of, 
made an appearance and then it was gone. It was nothing more than just sort of validation that we were in its presence and that was it. But it was the first time that I really felt like a connection, like I knew that on some level we met each other. I don't know any other way to describe it. So we left the Thursday night, advanced night ops, and we met up with the main Bigfoot Adventure weekends, which is about 30 people, I think, close to, close to it. Um, and we, uh, we did some Friday stuff with them, and we had a good time. And then on Saturday, we had our big night ops. But Saturday during the day, uh, we divided up into teams, and we all went into our night ops areas to scout it out in the day and see what we were you know, up against. So we all did that, and we came back, and we compared notes, and one team came back late and they were all just gleaming. And they started telling me stories of, we hiked up this super steep hill and we got up into the mountains and we just followed it up and down and up and down and we saw stick structures and footprints and everything you could imagine that is typically associated with Bigfoot. They saw it all, all in this area. And I was like, wow, that's incredible. Your night ops is gonna be great. And they're like, well, actually we're all completely wiped out from that because that's a heck of a hike. So we're good, like we have no problem, we're just gonna stay back at camp tonight and we have no problem, you know, leaving here completely satisfied. And that's what they wanted to do. So the whole team decided not to go. Um, so I decided to take my team there instead. And then one of the other team guys wanted to go as well, so we sort of teamed up. So um, so we got the team all together. Now the, day, the team during the day, they took some, it's like hunter's tape, it's uh, little pieces of nylon strips, they cut them off, they tie them on the branch of a tree and it marks the path. So I said, you know, no, you'll have no problem finding it. We marked the trail with this bright orange hunter's tape. Just follow it. When you see one, you shine your light down, you should be able to see the other. So we get up there that night and, and um, we get up that steep hill and it really is, it's a, it's a crazy steep hill. And I find the first little piece of hunter's tape. Um, then I sort of head off to the right because I can see the next one down. And I get past the next one and I, I can't find the third one. So we keep walking in that direction and and we walk around and I can't find any more. So we spent the next probably hour up and down, looking all over, trying to find more of that hunter's tape. Now granted it's, it's dark out and it's a lot harder to see it, but um, there was no sign of it. The, the, the trail was gone. So our team eventually decided on a spot where we tried to do some Bigfoot type investigations, you know, some calls and just sort of you know, trying to make some contact, and um, I, you know, I, I, f I felt like they were there, but just not where we were, you know. It was the right area, roughly, but we weren't quite in the spot, so um, all in all, we ended up um, with a fun night, but we didn't really have anything happen. It was sort of a, a, f a failed night ops because we couldn't find where we needed to go. Yeah, it was about three weeks later, we decided to return to the area, um, me and basically the Trails of the Unknown team. Uh, we were going to film a shortcut there, and it, there was actually um, another team that night that did have a sighting. It was actually the team I was supposed to be with. Um, they did have a sighting, so we went back three weeks later, and we, we set up camp um, just down the bottom of that mountain from where the sighting was, because you can't really camp up there. It's, it's too steep to set up a tent. Um, and we camped out that night, and then in the morning I grabbed the, the uh, camera gear and I went up to this place by myself, and I, and I went back to this spot. I'm heading up the hill now. Uh, I hiked up that steep hill. found the first and second trail markers again. So I have my breath yet. And still, I walked around for a little while. I knew that they probably weren't there, but I looked around for another 
15, 20 minutes and I couldn't find the third one. And I just sort of followed what I thought the team might have done. Like you could, you know, sort of see game trails and things and I just sort of started make, making my way through the woods and through this mountain up and down. So I must have walked maybe a half an hour and I can see a marker. Wait, I might have a flag. There was a piece of orange hunter's tape tied on a tree branch. The branch broken and it was laying on the ground. This might be one of our flags. It's been down. I don't know what it means. It's really freaking quiet around here. Why is it so quiet? Search continues. It's very peculiar. It was almost like that was maybe our, you know, our third marker that someone had taken and removed so that we so that the trail would be broken so you couldn't follow the trail. So I I I knew I was on the right track then and I kept following that. There was another marker. I found another flag. This one's also down. This doesn't feel right. I have to keep going. Found something. I did start to find the things they were talking about. They talked about animal kills, and I found what was left of a, I believe it was a deer. It was pretty much the entire skeleton with some meat on it. I mean, it was a whole carcass. Um, so I knew that that was, that was exactly what they described, and I moved on a little further, and I was able to find some of the structures and the area that they said that looked like prints all over the ground. Um, so I, I think I was, you know, I was pretty much there. and. And there was, um, I don't know, it, it, it felt like I had walked into someone's living room that I did not have permission to be there. It was just that feeling of, if you don't belong here. Um, it was quiet that day um, and not much happened. Uh, I was concerned about, you know, we had to pack up and get out of there and get back to work and everything. So I didn't stay too long. Um, I was satisfied that I had found the spot um, and that was enough for me on that day. So uh, we headed out. I was unable to locate the handheld camera footage from that day. Mysteriously, it disappeared. The body camera footage did not record my findings, so I would return another day to document the area. The next part of my journey would take me deeper within myself and closer to contact with Bigfoot. It's a couple months later. I'm at home sleeping and I wake up in the middle of the night. I had a crazy dream um, that was very disoriented and it felt so real. Uh, in my dream, I was back there. It's called the Lost Creek Wilderness area. 
and I was at the I walk I was at the top of that steep hill, and I was walking towards the area where, you know, it felt like Bigfoot's home. And in my dream, I I got walked through the area. I got into the middle of it, and I sat down, sort of Indian style, on the ground. And um, once I got myself situated on the ground, I I looked up, and there was a a Bigfoot in the tree line, maybe 30 yards away, just staring at me, just looking right at me. And I remember, even though it was a dream, there was no verbal communication, but there was just this overwhelming feeling. I don't even know how to describe it, just a feeling, some feeling of the presence, like there was energy. And uh, that was it, I woke up confused like you know it felt so real like I felt like I had just seen a Bigfoot but it was a dream I was starting to develop intuition on, on in the woods you know I'm not not saying like psychic intuition but you, you know when something's going on you know you know when all of a sudden the woods get quiet You're like well that wasn't me just something else is here you know things like that so we were starting to get used to things very used to things so this whole concept of things was very difficult for me to accept because all throughout the filming process of the Bigfoot Island Connection, this was coming up time and time again, and I was struggling with that internally. And now things were starting to happen to me. Um, things were happening at home, you know, other other things that we won't get into here. But um, so we we started filming a series um, that's called Paranormal Hotspots. And in there, we were working with a shaman to do some meditation and try to connect to a Bigfoot. Um, we had a, an individual that we filmed a session with and he wasn't able to connect. Um, he had some pain in his legs and things and it just didn't quite work out. So um, my father-in-law, Ron, um, suggested that we try with me. Um, of course, um, I was very reluctant. I wasn't really too much on board on this. Um, you know, I said, okay, let's, let's try it. So my name is Nicole Ann and this is my space here at Holistic Vitality. Um, I facilitate what, or at least what most people uh, come to see me for, is shamanic journey healing work. Um, but I have quite a lot of different modalities that I incorporate into what I offer here to really service people and what they're seeking within their intentions. But the shamanic journey work has been the most profoundly, I would say, life-changing for many people, and myself included, because uh, many of them have begun to channel um, higher conscious beings besides the opportunity to connect on a higher dimensional level or do um, shadow work or healing or connect to past lives really anything is possible my job is just to help them get out of their own way so they bypass their mind and their body and where their consciousness essentially goes traveling but in what they would therefore uniquely connect to is really based on the roadmap of the intentions that they set up prior to their journey. We will try to um, see what he connects to, how he connects to it, and see if he can dialogue, dialogue with any, again, it has to deal with his intentions and whatever the intentions are for what we're trying to get out of this experience, because that's going to kind of set up, like I said, the roadmap. I'm going to try to connect him to, say, the other side, if you will. Um, and based on what he then experiences, whether it's through seeing, feeling, downloading, what have you, I'm going to try to help him open up those senses so he can be more aware in his experience of that and be able to use those faculties. And after that, depending on whether he feels like he's guided to go somewhere, which is possible to go through portals and realms and dimensions, um, or sometimes beings might show up. A lot of times they might show up as orbs of light. Sometimes they can take on humanoid forms or angelic forms or symbolic forms. Sometimes that consciousness can be formless and just thinking in terms that everything is energy, therefore all is conscious, therefore all can then be engaged with in its own unique way. Um, including a heightened sense of maybe connection to self or the ability to go within, to tune into certain aspects of self. So we went to this office and um, she put me on this table and got me real comfortable. Um, we did a, a, a deep meditation. It took quite a while, probably an hour. She did a ceremony um, going through different chakras and things. And I just, you know, I went with it. Um, I didn't expect anything to happen. I didn't expect to even be able to really get into a meditative state. 
Um, so after this long ceremony, all different kinds of things with different incenses and, and I don't know, holy water or something she had, and, and it was a Native American ritual. Um, she said, you should be in deep meditation now. Do you see anything? I want you now to describe to me out loud, verbally so, whatever it is that you are seeing, feeling, or experiencing now. Okay. As I see a white light every once in a while, but that seems far away. Describe this white light to me. It, it kind of comes and goes. Can you see it right now? No. All of a sudden, I was like, wait a minute. There were these little white symbols. It almost looks like symbols, but I can't see it long enough to tell. Like symbols? Yeah. Very small in my, in my vision, you know, with my eyes closed. And they were just sort of, they would appear and then sort of fade, and appear and sort of fade. They looked like little hieroglyphics, but I couldn't quite tell what they were. Still little images, they kind of fade in and then fade out right away. They have a shape to them. Can you describe that shape? It varies. Okay. And I don't see it constantly. It comes and goes. I don't see it right now. Okay. But even though I was in meditative state, I said, let's, let's take me to this place, this lost wilderness because that's where I made contact in my dream. Focus on your breathing. I have an idea. Okay. I had a dream that I did that, but a different place. Let me try to go there. Okay. So, this is where it got really interesting and very unexpected. So she talked me in. You know, you're, you're walking up the steep hill now. You're coming to the clearing. And then I, as she was talking, the more she started talking, the, the less dark it was in my subconscious and the more I could see the woods. Almost like the dream again, but this time I was awake, sort of. And I, I got to the place, and then here's the opening, here's the clearing, I'm there, and she's with me, and we're talking it through. And I, and I get into the, the opening, and I sit down Indian style, just like I did in my dream. You mentioned you were here in a dream. What was significant about that dream when you were here last? It was here. What was here? The being. Mm. I feel it. You feel its energies? Yeah, on the top of my head. Again, asking this being to come closer, to share with you their presence in whatever way they're willing to share it. Whether that's to feel them, to see them, to hear them. Notice any sensations in your body changing. I feel very emotional. You feel very emotional? Yeah. Does those emotions belong to them? No. It's your emotions? Yeah. What kind of emotions are you feeling? I don't know how to describe it. I know why I feel them. I feel them because, because they're here. So validate for yourself that they're here with you and validate for them that you are here with them. And again, as I get situated, I'm concentrating on that and when I look up in the same place in my dream that I saw the Bigfoot 30 yards in the woods, I look up and there's maybe six to eight. Bigfoot, they're just sort of chest high, and they're almost sitting Indian style too, it looked like. They were all in the wood line with brush in front of them, and you could just see from sort of their chest up, and they were all just there, sort of 
panoramic view of like six to eight of these things, and they're all just looking at me. That's a lot. What's a lot? There's many of them. <laughs> I can feel the tears running down my face. That's wild. Are they aware of you? Yes, they're staring at me. Have they been aware of you before? Oh, yeah. Do they feel comfortable with you being there with them right now? I think so. Ask them. I'm having trouble communicating. I can feel them, but I don't know how to Maybe that's how. Maybe that's them. how they're communicating. Maybe they have language barriers. Maybe that's how you connect, is through feeling. Maybe the emotions is the way they're trying to share with you. I feel like I just don't know how, but I could be wrong. Maybe that's the hieroglyphics. Maybe, maybe which I don't see right now. But maybe that's some form of their language. I immediately felt this, this warmth start in my chest. And it almost felt sad, but then I realized it was it was the feeling like I had been waiting for that moment. It was like if you were actually standing in front of a Bigfoot, what you would feel, it would be sort of that you're happy and nervous at the same time. Sort of that, oh my God, it's finally happening. And it, 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 just, it just felt really emotional. And I could feel like, like tears going down my cheek. I mean, it was that real that I actually felt like I was there to the point where I had the emotions as if I was there. See if they can give you some kind of validation, like nodding their head or some kind of sign if, if, they're, if we're onto something. Was those hieroglyphics or <laughs> symbols you saw their language? The emotion feels stronger. Feels stronger? Yeah, it's heavy on my chest. Very heavy. And how did their energy feel? Did it feel lighter or heavier? Very heavy. Mm. I felt pinned down. I wonder what... Like I couldn't move. Did you feel threatened at all? No. No? Not at all. Okay. Ask them if they can show you their ways can they bring you into their environment bring you into their experience i think i am they just stared at me and, it, and then then that that warmth turned this heaviness and it felt like something was pushing on my waist with like two hands pushing me into the table and it got heavier and heavier, and I just was standing there staring at the Bigfoot, staring back at me, all in my subconscious. And I got to the point where I thought the table was going to break. Like that's how intense and heavy the pressure was. I felt like the table that I was laying on was just going to snap. So I, I, it got overwhelming to the point where I, I was having trouble breathing. I was shallow breath. So in my subconscious, I decided to sort of turn my back to the Bigfoot and just look away to sort of compose myself. And when I did that, the, the pressure kind of went away. Um, and then I decided to sort of re-engage with that. And I struggled to do that because I, I had sort of broken it, you know, sort of broken away from it. And I struggled to do that and I never really did get back there. I feel very strongly like I did after the dream that I need to go there again. You need to go to the actual location? Mm -hmm. Perhaps set an intention of them knowing when you will arrive and you knowing when you're supposed to arrive and going to that same location and allowing yourself to sit same thing in meditation in a non-threatening pose and trying to tap into their energies and calling them closer to you. So eventually, 
she brought me out of this meditative state and it, it took a little while a couple a few minutes to sort of ritualistically come back to <laughs> down to earth and uh, when I did I sort of sat up and boy though the whole room just just spun I, I wouldn't have been able to stand it was just like everything was spinning around and I was very disoriented and that lasted for a couple minutes she went and got me some water and I, it took me five or ten minutes to sort of feel like I could stand up after that and when I look back at it you know I, f I feel like that they they wanted to communicate with me in some way but I, I felt like I wasn't ready or I didn't know how there wasn't any real language that we could share so I think whatever it was they were trying to communicate to me I just wasn't I wasn't ready for that so that was kind of the experience that happened the session we did with Nicole um, raised the possibility that there was an, an, an avenue of getting in touch with what might be called the source of Bigfoot. And it, would, it, it could become present for you in the form of speaking through the, the channel or the person, or putting the person aside and speaking directly or connecting directly in some way with, in this case, Alan. And, and it happened in a way that he got indication of symbols, which is often what happens in channeling sessions. It, it tied together in, in a way saying, hey, boy, you're on the right track here in some ways. The Lost Creek Wilderness Area is 120,000 acres of raw wilderness located just outside Bailey, Colorado. This area has a rich history of Bigfoot sightings and other strange occurrences and this is the place I was most drawn to throughout my journey. After the visit with the shaman, I knew that I needed to go back to that area, of course. It's, everything is telling me that that's the place, that's where I have to go. So I, I tried to go up there, um, I don't remember when, February or so, and uh, I, I got up close, but I couldn't get in there. The snow was too much. Um, my, my car couldn't handle it. so. Um, it was a while before I got back there, not till the spring, um, but I did. I went back there by myself. I'm at the base of the trail that leads me into this area, so we're going to see what happens as I go up here and look for evidence of Bigfoot, and I try to make contact and see what happens. So um, let's get going. So this area is unique in that it's uh, sort of challenging to get to. Um, the first thing you got to do is cross a little stream here, and uh, it's sort of late spring, so we've had snow and rain, and it's really moving, but it looks passable. And then you gotta head straight up this hill. It's very steep and takes a lot of energy, but um, we'll take a break when we get up there. jump but not too bad. Now we go up. It's definitely a Steeper than it looks. Alright. A little bit more. So here's some hunter's tape that we marked the area last year with. So this is the right spot. Alright, so I hiked a little bit, not far. Found the next marker. Now from what I remember. The rest of the markers are a bit harder to find or are missing, so I'm sort of on my own here now. All right, I've been hiking for just a little bit, not long. Came across this rock outcrop here. 
I've been to this area before and it's it's an interesting one. Just because of this right here. So there's some rose quartz over here, I'll show you in a minute. But um there's these little circles and they're, they're sort of all over this area here. Here's one little cactus growing out of it. See what I mean? So it's very strange. And then I come over here and uh, we have a it's like a burial site. And it says Phoenix. So, you know, I don't know what this is about. It gives me an uneasy feeling, though. Just, it's just creepy to have sort of this ritual site, maybe. You know, I don't know. It's really weird. What do we got here? So there's a outline of rocks, and then this. Huh. Here we go. Died in 1929, 21 years old. Planted these trees. Wonder what happened to him. Bizarre. So then we have this. Like I said, I've been up here a few times, but I've never seen any of this. This is all new to me. Huh. After assessing the area, I determined this location was most likely a homestead in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Really interesting. Alright, so I've been following a little game trail for a few minutes. Um, you can sort of see a beaten path. It's faded, it kind of blends in. But I was kind of following this along and uh, I found one of the other orange markers, but it's sort of off the off the tree. Buried in the pine needles. Okay, so just a bit further down from where I was with the uh, the orange ribbon. Um, not far, I can see it still. I found the deer leg. What's left of a deer leg bone here? So, more than likely something big is hunting in this area. This obviously isn't that recent. Um, so we just gotta keep our ears open and our eyes peeled for any kind of dangers out here, but for now I'm gonna keep pushing ahead since I feel like I'm on the right path. Uh, I'll tell you though, the this is a younger forest here. The trees are smaller and closer together and it feels closed in and I definitely don't like the vibe here, but we'll see what's up ahead, okay? Okay, so again, not too far from the other one, but uh, see some definite interesting signs here. Um, here's some more bones. Again, looks like deer. And then uh, I've got more over here. So obviously this has been here a while. Um, there's the head over here. There's the skull. So we're in the right place. Something's out here. Now let's see if we can find it. So 
so I got that feeling it was strong back my head tingles sort of like you walk in someone's house that you don't know sort of that I don't belong here I'm somewhere I'm not supposed to be kind of feeling so I don't know what that means if that's good or bad but uh, just want to mention that in case something happens let's keep looking So I found this area, there's all these trees down, and um, what's unique about it is I can see, it's hard to describe, and you're certainly not going to be able to see it, but it looks like something's been walking around here. I see these, I guess I call heavy impressions, indents, but they're not defined enough, especially after the winter snow and everything, to uh, discern if they're footprints or not, but they look like old footprints, and they're just sort of around here and there little indentations you can see where something big and heavy's been walking through here so that scared me <laughs> the creaking trees are not helping my nerves <laughs> i already feel like this is intense i uh, definitely feel like i'm somewhere not supposed to be i feel like something's watching me just feels creepy. The wind is allowing me to, I think, sneak in here a little bit, but it's also allowing me to be snuck up on, so just gotta be careful. Um, I'm at the spot that uh, I envisioned in my dream. This is the spot that I wanted to come to. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is sort of go up over by these trees, close to the wood line, because it's sort of a clearing here, and sit there for a while and see if anything is interested in me. Um, you know, this seems to be the place. There's an X over here. They always say, look for the X. Well, there's the X. walking but I kind of swear I heard a voice softly this could get interesting so I'm set up I'm in comfy rock here I'm gonna um, I'm just gonna sit here for a little while and be real quiet and see sort of what happens Well, it was pretty quiet. Um, I sat here for a while. And, um, I don't know. I feel something, but it doesn't want to interact right now. So I'm going to start heading back towards the car and take my time and see if maybe they change their mind as I get moving here. Though I wasn't able to make definitive contact on this day, it wouldn't be long before I did. All right, so I made it back to the top of the hill, leads down to the car. Um, you know, it's a really, really interesting area. There's some unusual stuff up there. It definitely feels like the right place. I didn't have a lot go on today. We'll look at some of the footage and see. Um, I'm gonna keep coming back here. This is definitely, I'm drawn to this spot. Um, you know, the one, one thing that really sort of bothers me and sticks in my head here is um, when our team was here last year, we used Hunter's Ribbon to mark the whole way. And uh, they marked it all the way in and then they followed it all the way out. So the last time uh, that team was here, it's a clearly marked trail to get back to the car. Now, 
Um, I can find the first two ribbons on the trees. I can find a third one, which was probably not the third one, but a third one somewhere down the way on the ground, and there's no other ribbons anywhere to be found. So that really, that really bugs me. It seems like something, you know, erased the trail, took those away somehow. I don't know. I had a chance to sit down and talk with clairvoyant medium Dr. Rebecca Foster at an event called Phenomicon in Vernal, Utah, September of 2022. Her perspective on all this really resonated with me, and I thought you should hear this before I take you on the rest of my journey. In my personal experience with Bigfoot, on both a telepathic and a physical level, it's a physical being. It's a humanoid. It's a very intelligent being, but it moves seamlessly, quietly, without movement. They just, like the wind, they become the trees, they meld. These are interdimensional, just like, because they're also connected with aliens, they're connected to fae and all the elementals in the woods. If you can see a fairy light, if you can see an orb, you're probably amongst a squatch in the woods. They're not running around as if you were to be in the zoo in an enclosure with a gorilla. In the woods, you can be standing right there and they're just observing and looking and they're, they're really non-threatening. They're not going to hurt you unless you were to charge them or most of the time humans are vibrating at a certain level. They're very high, they're benevolent. They are giving and loving and caring creatures. They have no, they're, they're not human in the way of I'm going to go hunt just to kill or hate or feel anger. They're not, that's not their initial vibration to feel that way. That is human. Human has so many different levels of darkness added to it where Bigfoot does not. So when you're experiencing them by radiating that higher level of vibration of enlightenment, of forgiveness, of love, of self-love, of peace, peace is a huge deal. If you are living a life with turmoil and strife and stress and you are angry and you go into the woods, just like me being around, I'm going to go, hmm, we are not vibrating. I don't want to know what you're feeling. I don't know what you're thinking. They're the same way. So when you feel that higher vibration and thinking level, you're going to be able to see them. It, and that's part of it. The veil lifts the more on that spectrum of higher enlightenment and peace and love and gratitude that you're feeling. And the more you're experiencing that genuinely radiating it, the higher your vibration. So you're going from 3D living into the 4D, 5D dimension where they're, they're at. So when you change your perspective when you change who you are as a human living you are raising that dimension and your vibrational dimensional aspect and you are then able to just see them clearly because that's where they are you know the movie avatar it uh, it's psychologically affected people in such a great way that they actually had to go see therapists because they wanted that utopian feeling of connection to earth so badly they wanted that they can have it they just have to walk through the woods barefoot. They have to feel the connection to the trees, to the leaves, to the water, to the animals. And by practicing that, I think people would be able to just live in harmony. Is this the key to unlocking the Bigfoot mystery? It's something I'll have to consider as my journey continues. The next part of my journey takes me back to the Pacific Northwest to meet up with my friend Tom Powell at his house along the Clackamas River in Oregon. Tom has a small section of woods towards the back of his property where he has had some very strange occurrences. One summer night, I'm walking along this trail. Something comes crashing down the slope. I had seen a deer out here earlier in the day, so I was supposing that it was a deer, but the deer I saw had a rack on it. I didn't want to be in its way. But I stood there for the longest time and it crashed down the slope. And so I was waiting for it to go by and I got up off the trail and I stood there for must have been 20 minutes waiting for it to go by and, and nothing moved. 
so then I thought, oh, it's gone. It, maybe I didn't hear that after all. It's too steep of a slope anyway. So then I started walking on this trail again, and then it starts moving again. And it starts coming down the trail. So I came over here and jumped on the bench just to get out of its way. And then it comes crashing up the trail, but, but then it starts walking real softly. I'm peering out from behind a tree, trying to stay out of its way, but trying to see what it is. And I peered and peered, and, uh, and all of a sudden, it was like a blanket was thrown over my eyes. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't even make out the outlines of the trees and before the stars were kind of illuminating. But all of a sudden, it's like I couldn't see a thing. And so it, I could almost hear it breathing. It was so close. And as I'm standing there peering at it, I'm, I, don't have, I wish I had a flashlight. The only thing I had was my, my wristwatch that had a little button on it. Oh, yeah. So I'm holding up my <laughs> wristwatch, pushing the button, trying to illuminate. And all of a sudden I thought, this is ridiculous. And at that moment, something does this to the back of my ear. <laughs> From right here behind the trees. Oh. All of a sudden that's like, I'm surrounded. Yeah. So I jump off the bench and I hightail it back to the house. And I sat down on the deck, started undoing my shoes and from all the way across the neighbor's property comes this cackling laughter. Oh, really? So I, uh, I look at the bedroom window. This is about two in the morning. And all of a sudden the light goes on. So I go into the room and, and there's my wife with the light on. She sitting there, sitting up in bed. I said, what are you doing up this time of night? And she said, what the hell is that noise? And I go, oh, <laughs> Miss Bigfoot Skeptic, you tell me. <laughs> and she said, I have never heard that noise before. And I go, okay, so we both agree that's not just coyotes, because we hear coyotes all the time. Sure. Um, I mean, it really sounded like laughter, and when I reflect upon it, it's almost like they were laughing. Wow. At me. Because I scared the crap out of you. We got you bad, dude. <laughs> you had that coming, though. Yeah. Alan had a very profound experience with, with another sensitive, um, Tish Poquette. And she helped guide him to, a, to feeling the presence of what she clearly described was what was ever behind her sense that there was a Bigfoot there. And they both had direct contact sitting next to each other of something that would be called Bigfoot, which is very close to the same experience in the same place that Tom Paul had his one transformational paranormal Bigfoot experience. Tom Powell introduced me to a psychic medium named Tish Paquette. Um, my name is Tish Paquette. Um, I'm a retired educator and I have a private business called Emergent Readings and Reiki. I do intuitive work and I also do hypnosis and energy work and massage. I am a co-founder of the uh, Institute for Conscious Expansion and in that we teach classes on Reiki and finding your intuitive gifting and learning about the other dimensions. Tish was really interesting. She she had a connection to Tom's property. She'd had some experience with Tom there before. Um, I, you know, I talked to her quite a bit about what I was doing and what I was trying to do and where I was trying to go with this and, and that I had recognized that there was potentially a way to have some sort of connection with a Bigfoot in a non-physical way, you know, sort of a uh, a mind-to-mind -mind kind of thing, even if it's not necessarily, you know, uh, telepathy or anything like that, but just sort of a, a transfer of energy from this being to myself in a way that's meaningful. And she, you know, confirmed that, that that would be possible and she was going to help me with that. I knew that you were like on, on a precipice. You were like, so genuine and so interested and you didn't shut down to thoughts and ideas of past experience that that you would write off and say oh that's just this or oh that's just that you were open to the possibility and and i knew that it's not uncommon for tom's property to um have young ones there um I believe that that's a safe environment that where they can come 
and um, have their young or at least uh, lots of times they will leave their young in a specific place and go forage or whatever but they know that it's safe and Tom's property offers that. So usually when I come here I say hello ask permission to visit and I usually just sit and rest and feel what I pick up. But what I do know to be true about this is that there is an energy flow, not just from the fact that there's a path here, but there is an energy flow. So we went back there that night after dark and we sat on this bench and we sort of closed our eyes. She was gonna guide me into a meditation. As soon as I closed my eyes, we heard a noise up at the top. It's a steep hill right behind the bench. So over to my left, I could hear a noise. It was clear that there was something moving around up there. And Tisha Mede said, you know, that's a, that's a Bigfoot. It's sort of a, a sentinel, if you will. It's, it's up there. It knows what we're doing. It knows who we are. It knows why we're there. It's keeping an eye on us. It, it's looking there. We had some people by a campfire not too far away. It was keeping an eye on them. And uh, it, it understood what we were there for. We did have the sentinel one who I believe kind of just said it's okay to get closer to the other one. Um, but again, that was for you. It wasn't for me. It wasn't for anyone else there. That was for you. She starts to laugh and she says, I'm seeing visions now. It's showing me it's family. There's, there's another Bigfoot. There's little ones are playing in the trees. It's not here. It's not like right here, but it's, it's nearby. They live in this patch of woods. They're, they're not far. And he's showing me, he's like sharing with me these interactions, you know, of his family. I just remember the trees and, and the little ones playing and uh, the female uh, watching and, and um, kind of keeping guard and making sure everything's safe. They've been coming there forever. And about this time, I could hear something walking towards me down the hill over my right shoulder and it was just gentle footsteps bipedal one then another closer and closer and she acknowledged yes you know he's he's coming closer he's coming to you know he's coming to see you he's he knows what you're doing and why you're here and the noise stopped probably about six feet over my right shoulder I'm still eyes closed for trying to meditate I was prepared for it to reach out and touch me, that it's happened there before to people. So I was prepared for that to happen. And I started to feel that warmth in my chest, just like a good feeling. And as, the, as it approached and eventually stopped six feet from me, that warmth started to just swirl around and it just felt like a hug on the inside. I don't know how else to describe it. It was just a very it was a good feeling, a really good feeling, and it was a, a connection like I've never felt before with anything. And the swirling and the feeling just sort of slowly dissipated over a couple minutes, and then that was sort of it. Whatever it was, it didn't walk away. Um, it didn't. It didn't leave via foot. It was just over. I can remember you sitting there and, and you're telling me, I can, I can feel this. It, and you know, when you're in it, there's just this overwhelming sense of love. And um, not everyone experiences that, um, but that's what they offer. And you got to experience it. And that was beautiful because it does, it brings tears to your, to your eyes. It just, it, it is overwhelming. Um, so then we opened our eyes and the whole woods sort of had this white glow to it, like a very thin, light, white glow. So I turned and looked over my shoulder and there was nothing there. And I looked back and, you know, we just sort of smiled, me and Tish, not much you could say. And uh, the glow sort of faded and we were in the darkness again and we, we made our way out. And when we just got off the trail back into sort of the cleared field, um, you could hear something step on a twig or a branch and it snapped um, just at the base of the trail not far behind us. So, it, you know, we really felt like it, it never left and it, and it followed us out. You know, it sort of walked us out.
Next, I headed to Elkhorn, Wisconsin, where high concentrations of Bigfoot activity have been reported. We were still filming for Paranormal Hotspots, and we were in Wisconsin. We were um, filming the Beast of Bray Road area, and uh, one of the investigators took us to one of his areas, which was in the, the Moraine Kettle Wilderness area, um, not too far from Bray Road, 30, 40 minutes maybe. So we went there at night with him. He took us to his spot where he's had experiences. Just what I try to do is actually get in tune with what's around me, you know, try to, you know, go to Zen, if you will. But just as I turned before you guys started walking this way, right out here, I saw something red in the woods. Now, it's there for a second. So I, I don't know, you know, sometimes you got to say, is it, is it pareidolia? But I'm not really thinking of red eyes or anything like that. Now, I could be 100% wrong at the same time, but I, I always have to document it, just, to, just in case, because you never know. Which direction was it? Right over this kettle right here. A friend of mine and I walked right down in this same very spot, maybe a little bit further where we came from, and hightailed it out. There was just something not right about that night. It was it was really an ominous feeling. But there's a lot of no. Right now, I and I usually tell people this too is that I feel like I'm sitting at home, you know, in my living room on the couch. It just it's uh, comfortable. My father-in-law was directing, and he decided, let's let's try doing a, me a group meditation. So let's do something a little different. Uh -huh. Because one of the rules that we picked up is that they'll show us something, but they're not going to perform for us. Okay. So they won't repeat. Okay. Because it won't be novel. My sense is that uh, when you were talking, Jay, yeah. I heard something off to the woods, been my left or right, behind you and I've heard it consistently behind us. So my sense is we might have been followed in. I'm gonna validate that because you're saying on this side, yep. that's where I've heard a few things too. Yep. It's to my right. Yeah. Honestly, if, if I had to guess, it's directly to my right, straight down. You should turn off your headlight. I felt it uh, on the left side when we were walking in. So I thought back to my time with Tish and what I'd ended up doing was I walked away from them and I walked off the trail, not far, just a little bit into the woods and I, I put my back to the hill. It goes down into this kettle they call it. So behind me it went straight down. So I sat on, on the base of this tree with my back to the woods and started to just sort of relax and close my eyes. So I began that process of sort of trying to meditate myself, and I'm not a meditator, so it was a little bit of a struggle to get there. And just sort of quietly concentrating, and um, I started to hear movement behind me. I'm just trying to clear my mind. And just sort of feel the moment. Feel the energy. And the energy that I feel is down at the bottom of this 300 foot drop behind me. But in the last few minutes, it's moved to 100 feet, now 50 feet. And I can feel it now. It's warm in my chest and tingling down each arm. And right about that time, my father was okay. We're we're good. We're all wrapped up here. Let's um, let's do a little wrap up piece here. Everybody gather around, and then we'll get out of here. 
I stood up and I didn't didn't feel right. Um, felt very heavy in my chest, almost like I was still connected in some way. Um, so I, we walked up and they sort of met me halfway. So I, w I didn't walk far. We were in a group and they were sort of doing a little wrap up. And um, while they were talking, I felt like I felt so heavy. Like I felt like I was sinking into the dirt in the trail. Yeah. Alan, cool. What do you want me to say? <laughs> Just you know, sum up what's going on. So yeah, we sort of let sort of let let our minds go and settled in and got comfortable. And I feel like. The surroundings and the things that are in out there are sort of a connection with it in some way. Sort of just a inner peace type of feeling. Yep, well, actually, I'm Eventually we wrapped up there and, and they started walking off and I'm following them. And I noticed that I couldn't keep up. My head, my, my, my feet and my legs were just really, everything was so heavy. I felt like my whole body was just weighted down and I'm just really struggling to walk and then they're getting further and further away they don't notice what's happening and, I, and then I start hearing you know things on both sides of the trail behind me in the woods just creeping closer not aggressively but they're moving with me moving closer and I'm like trying to keep up with them and they're they're up at the trail they're making the turn now even, even if I was to yell they might not hear me they're far enough ahead so I can't keep up at all it's heavy heavy and I was just feeling the, the the presence of something bearing down on me from behind. So eventually, um, we weren't that far in the woods, so eventually we got up to the parking area and I caught up to them and uh, the sense of being followed went away. You know, whatever was in the woods stayed in the woods. I still didn't feel right. Still heavy, but not as bad. And uh, we were getting in the car and everybody got in. And it was just me and my father-in-law and I told him, I said, I don't, I don't, something's not right. I said, well, I, I'm, I'm still, connected in some way, that I'm still attached to this thing, I still feel really, really heavy. And uh, I don't know how to explain this next part. He, my father-in-law has, has been practicing Aikido for a good part of his life, and he's in his mid-70s now, and he's, he's written books about it, and he teaches these flow classes, and he's sort of mastered some of these, you know, techniques of the Zen, or whatever they call it. Um, so he just grabbed me very firmly on the shoulder and he just stood there for a minute and uh, when he let go I didn't feel anything, I, it was gone, the weight was gone and he just got in the car, he didn't say anything and I got in the car and I didn't say anything and it was, uh, I don't really know what happened, it was really weird uh, and I asked him later, well, when you did that did you feel anything and he just said yes but I still really don't know really what it was or, or what he did to make it go away, or if it did go away, I, I don't really know. Um, was that a Sasquatch energy? Were they trying to get your attention? Were they holding on to you to say, don't go? That's the first impression I got, was that you were connecting and, and making some headway, and then all of a sudden, okay, we're done. And they weren't done. Like in some way he hadn't completed what he needed to do that night. I have this ability from martial arts of getting into what I call the flow state, which is a shift that allows other things to happen that, that don't happen normally. And I shifted and put my hand on him, which in, on his shoulder, which in some way released what needed to be released, untied a knot so that he could return to normal. The next experience I had was at Bigfoot Adventure Weekends, July of 2022 at Glen Isle Resort, and was quite unexpected. We were at the Bigfoot weekend, mm -hmm. and um, well, you guys were out, uh, looking for places to take people. We took a DVD to give to the owner of the Glen Isle Resort and um, she immediately gave it to her, the DVD. And she was attending the gift shop and said, let me tell you about an experience I had. But she said, you know, there's these 
these trees on the property that are exceptional. The, the Native Americans had found this way of they could shape the tree as it grew. And these trees became important to them in some way spiritually, either as guideposts or they would get energy from them. And there was, there's five of them on the property, the mm -hmm. Glen Isle. And I said, oh, that's interesting. Can you take me to one? She said, oh, yeah, there's one right, right by the entrance. So oh. Later that, that day, when the gang was gathered around me, I do typically a meditation to get them into a mindset, right. which is sort of an opening up and letting go. It occurred to me that perhaps some of the people would like to try this, which is a pretty simple experiment. You, it is. You put your hand on it and you stay, stay in the state that they were in, basically, and ask for something, ask for healing, ask for you know, contact, send it energy, yeah. do whatever seemed appropriate to them. Everyone had an experience of some sort of varying degrees of everything, really. You and I, we decided we should give it a shot. I'm just kind of being open. And we're kind of facing each other. You're on this side of the tree, I'm on this side of the tree, so we were sort of basically facing each other on opposite ends of the tree. Yeah, I mean, I could look over and see you clearly. Yeah. But our eyes are closed. Yeah. And, um, at one point, for whatever reason, I opened, opened my eyes slightly and looked over at you. And there was a, a creature, a dark creature, probably a foot taller behind you, maybe two, two and a half feet right behind you. It, it had a humanoid shape. I mean, I could only see from about here up for, with both of you. And for some reason, you were kind of waffling in and out of existence. And of course my mind, I was, I was aware of it. And I'm thinking, boy, what is this? You know, I'm trying to reconcile it with normal reality. It was not normal reality. And finally I said to you, Alan, there's a creature behind you. I put my hands on the trees and I sort of dropped my head a little bit and just concentrated on it. Within a few minutes I began to hear, again, I think I, I was transported as well. I wasn't, the things that were happening to me weren't happening to me in that location at that time. Because I was hearing noises and tree breaks and uh, splashing around in the water and all these things that obviously weren't happening right then and there at the moment. This one I felt like I was somewhere else for the experience. And I didn't, I was very confused because I knew something was happening and, and, and the more that happened, the more I began to feel an energy, it's the best way I can describe it. I could visualize the space that this being took, even though it was behind me and I never turned around, never opened my eyes. I could visualize how big it was, I could just feel the shape of it. I don't know, I've never felt that before, it's the only way to describe it. And in that state of confusion, I opened my eyes and looked at you. You were looking at me, but your eyes were closed, but your head was facing me. And you just said, Alan, there's a creature behind you. <laughs> right at that, I mean like, boom, 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 just so quickly. And, and I was so confused, I just looked at you and I leaned forward and I was like, what did you just say? Because I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe you just said that. And then when you said it again, my, the only thing I could say was, I know. I know there is. I remember that. And then that was, that was it. And then I turned around and I looked and, you know, everything looks normal. There's nothing out of place. and. Obviously, all the things that I could hear, really very loud noise, um, nothing, nothing like that happened. I asked Dr. Foster to analyze this experience. Here are her thoughts. The interesting part about that, the energy that actually is, as you're telling me this story and seeing this play out, before the Squatch comes up behind you, it's almost as if, the branches of the tree are up here, the trunk is here, the root system, and I'm watching that whole energy thing like a magnetic field, just like we have, right up the trunk and out the branches and around and down and through the roots and back up. Oh, look at this. That's amazing. It, it's, well, I'm kind of like standing behind you right now, 
in that first person of that squatch energy that came up behind you. Because he said, Alan, and it almost looks like he touches your right shoulder even. He comes, you know, like if I go like this, if you close your eyes and I do this, you can feel me without touching you. Mm -hmm. That's electric man, electromagnetic and it can create a static. And that's about what he did. He didn't actually physically touch you and tap you here. And I don't know what you had going on with your neck or your back at that moment, but I'm feeling that as well. It's almost like I can see from his perspective, I can see your blood flow where you're hot. I can see where you're cool and cold and you actually looked a little nervous right about your center chakra, but this is all warm and you, biceps down is hot. Like you were actually in that moment, completely feeling the energy of that moment, like in it. And the blood had moved away from protective, like there was no fear because this is all blue. So the blood had actually moved to your extremities and you were actually grounded into the root system of that magnetic field of that tree and your hands, your head, everything. I'm like, I can feel that that's what's probably giving me the shakes is I can feel that and he almost feels holographic the way I feel like I'm looking at you I'm looking through that to you which means he was there with you on that plane but within a different dimensional aspect and I don't think you'll ever be forgotten by these forest people I, I think that if you go back that they're is some kind of connection between you and him. And you may even go out in the woods and feel that, like a tap, a physical tap, just to like, hey, we're here. And, you, and I would think if you were to go out in the woods and just vulnerable present yourself, that within a matter of time, you would have them come up to you. Almost, I don't want to say a meditative state, but a state of release a state of just seeing yourself with the ground but that's what they do they create this change in you they create this knowledge that they're there and it instantly becomes an obsession or or an addiction it becomes something in your dna that you have to go back and see them Whatever it is, Bigfoot, um, some sort of alien being, some sort of higher dimensional being, some interdimensional being, you know, whatever it is, I, I feel like it's trying to make connections with us and I feel like it can be done. I feel like you can have sort of an interaction, if you will, um, though it's, it's a type of communication. Um, I don't know that I understand it, but there's some sort of connection or bond between you know, us as, as humans and whatever these beings are. And I believe that what I've done and been able to do is, is not anything special to me. It's just, I'm open to it, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for it, I'm trying to do it, but I believe it's a connection they want to have with all of us for whatever reason. But, you know, if I was to sort of put it all together and what I think right now is that there's lessons to be learned, like we're, we're sort of infants in this, uh, you know, thing called life where we don't have a big scope of the universe. We're very much, as humans, centered around our day-to-day -day lives on this planet. And I think it's possible there's other beings from other places that are here trying to help us understand that we are a bigger piece of that puzzle than we know. And, you know, I don't know how that impacts our future. I don't know how that impacts our present, but I feel like they're here trying to help in some way.